Amy in Tampa, Florida. See more better here with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And thank you for your patience. I just got back from my trip to Maine. And now I'm going to cut the Verilux X. The Verilux X. With Transitions Brown and Crizal Sapphire for your Ray-Ban 5187. Color 2445, which is the glow in the dark green and the 52 eye size. No, wait, color 2445 two, <laughs> is the Havana green. Havana, which is the capital of uh, Columbus, Ohio. No, Havana, Cuba. <laughs> it's a tortoise color and uh, with green on the inside. And of course, they all come with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping from Havana, Cuba or wherever this came from. Sorry, I'm playful. My wife is here helping me do some paperwork. We just went out to dinner. So if I'm moving a little slow, it's because I am full. So, but again, this is the Ray-Ban 5187 color 2445 in the 52 eye size with the 16 bridge and 140 temple length. So again, this is the tortoise and the green. I will show you my two-tone frame. Well, let's do it now. The way this is tortured, I have blue and crystal, and it pretty much follows whatever's crystal is green, whatever Havana is blue on mine. But that's how they do the color scheme. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses. Put those in the case so you make sure you get it. Of course, your hard shell case and your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that is in there. I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker program this shape into the computer you are secret agent 1659 and let's hit start a little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality you buy any Genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses My receipt has my federal ID tax number So if you have vision insurance or health savings account flex dollars You will get reimbursed for this purchase and the reason why I programmed this shape in there is Because I have the ability to do so and two years from now should Amy ever need new lenses I can mail them right to her home and she can pop them in after watching this video on how to do that now she is getting well let's go ahead and program the first thing in there your pupillary distance is 31 for the right eye so I'm going to tap the minus button a couple times to get down to 31 I'm going to raise the optical center the seg height to 18 I want to change the layout screen to that screen now normally you already see me with the lenses dotted up but the Verilux X hopefully you guys can see that hopefully you can it comes with all of the progressive lenses come with yellow paint on the lens before we get going but that is hopefully you can see that the Verilux X design is what it says on there before I clean all of that off so but let me show you here's something new this is how you dot up a progressive I'm going to take my Crizal pen this is a little magnifying lamp and every progressive has little circles 34 millimeters apart and I'm going to put a dot in the center of that I also underline the bifocal strength on the right and then I write on here backwards R that when you turn it around it is a normal R this is a layout screen for Verilux it has those two round circles 34 millimeters apart when I overlap those dots with the ones there it tells me where to place that of course it also comes with hopefully you can see this yellow paint on the lens it pretty much tells me the same thing but the people at the lab who dot these up go very fast all day long I never assume that the paint is correct and so I always put my own dots on a lens I'm not a conspiracy theory person other than the fact that I think the person at the lab is trying to get me fired from y'all and so that's why I never trust what they do. I always underline, even though it has an L on here for left, I write my own, I verify that it is the left lens, and then I write on there the backwards L. Put these dots on my layout screen. 
Now these overlap perfectly, showing me exactly where it's supposed to be, but I never assume that. Remember what happens when you assume? You make an ass out of Uma Thurman. <laughs> so I need to, now I'm going to go ahead and clean the, the, the yellow paint off the lens. And hopefully you guys can see that where it says the Verilux X design. Can you guys see that in there? So I'm going to use some acetone and remove that from the lens. Anytime I use a harsh chemical, uh, I always prefer to do it when the lens is not in the frame. I don't like these, these compounds, cleaning compounds, getting anywhere near the frame just to protect the finish. So I do that over there. Now that these lenses are dotted up, no more yellow paint. I'm going to place that onto the platform. That blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. And again, now this is where you normally see it. Center dot for the seg height, two outer dots, which tells me that everything is oriented where it should be when I use this layout. And, oh, almost got ahead of myself. This is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. Because uh, Susan from the field is already taken. No, so this is Jenny from, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> That's the sushi talking. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them here. Hannah from the Hayfields. How's that sound? Um, put that onto the, the first one. Now the second one, I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky, if I can pull that away. See if I can pull that off. Now on the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Now let's get everything laid out the way it should be again and I always like to hit this button make sure that I can see the lens is large enough to cut out I always like to see that myself hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the left lens pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line up the magnet same pupillary distance 31 Natural, which could be different, but naturally the same seg height, the optical sensor difference. Get that on there. Make sure the lens is large enough to cut out. And hit that button, the block's going to come down and be placed onto the left lens. Now, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> you know, Amy paid for that joke. I, you know, I got to give it. In fact, I'll do it twice. Amy, let me recap. <laughs> no, okay, so um, this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth and tell more bad jokes. It costs forty thousand dollars. Well, actually, this costs thirty thousand. This costs ten thousand combined. It cost uh, thirty thousand. This pen was free from the Crizal company. They gave this to me for free. Um, and let me recap. <laughs> I'm in a particularly silly mood because my wife's here listening to my videos. I'm just trying to torture her. She's over there. And I told her that when she's done to come sit behind me in one of these chairs and harass me. That I won't put her on camera. She doesn't like to be on camera. But I told her to come and just start touching stuff on the counter. Just so I know she's there. And I can hug her from behind. I'm going to take my hands and hug her from behind if she comes over here. But, oh yeah. So $30,000. It has a grinding wheel here. It's going to grind away your lens material from this size down to that size. That's fair, isn't it? And this wheel in the center is going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So I just flew back from Maine and uh, I got a bagel in the airport. Do you know what kind of bagel flies? A plain bagel. <laughs> Uh, I told the people that at the bagel counter, and uh, it took them a second to get it. And they, I think they laughed out of politeness, but yeah, that's the only reason they laughed. But uh, so, wake up the computer, secret agent 1659. This blinking light tells me I need to change the drill attachment, but I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna do it because I ain't listening to you, and I'm not drilling anyway. I'm waiting for drill season. So, these are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen on this frame, but I will put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens, but not on the front surface because it's not going to protrude from the front of the frame. I'm going to press that block on there firmly. 
Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. Or by now, you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Let's hit the green arrow which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens will be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into it. Look, it's got some gunk on there. Making sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. And then the carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel for the least amount of edge thickness, of which you should be minimal in this frame with your prescription. The light you see flickering in the background is water. That's there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens during the cutting cycle. Now, plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex materials cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, you will see water spray onto this lens, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may happen to see beginning to form on the edge of the lens. The polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires uh, safety worker wear and safety glasses when they're on the factory floors, as well as mechanics, carpenters, landscapers, all of that stuff to protect their eyes. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are, un are eight times more sensitive to UV light than your, than your skin. So, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Tampa, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now you got the Transitions Brown that I'll demonstrate later, but you also got the Crizol Sapphire. Crizol Sapphire is a treatment, it has three treatments in one. The first is that it reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such. <coughs> Excuse me. If you notice your lens is completely flat around the edges, if I were to take it out, it would stand up on the counter on its own like a nickel. It's just about to drop down onto the bevel wheel to get the V-shaped bevel. The second feature of the anti-glare is known as ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating, so it reduces reflections. So when someone's looking at you, it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see the reflection in the camera. Or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you will not see the, or less likely to see the flash in the, in the, in your lens. Now water is spraying on there, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. Now the third feature that I like about the Crizol anti-glare coating is because it takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. Crizol put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. Your lens literally gets eight different coatings and it has to be taken out of the machine, given an acid bath, washed, cleaned, air dried in a sterile environment, in a clean room. And so be, because of all that work and effort and time and expense, that's why they put the hardest scratch coating on there. So in just a moment, I'll open this door with my mind. See, y'all don't believe me. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours of staring at it, but then I can do it. All right, so I'm going to remove any optical sawdust. Look, I love it when it comes off in one piece. Look at that, like lint out of the dryer trap. Normally, I would leave that on the floor, but my wife's here, so I'm going to pretend to be clean tonight. Don't anyone tell her that I drop stuff on the floor when no one's looking. So, we're going to tuck this into the outside corner, press down. It's not going in yet, so I want to take about a little bit more off the lens. I'm going to hit retouch. Now, instead of going to the cutting wheel, it's just going to drop down to the bevel wheel. I do not want to force the lens into the frame. It would cause the frame to stretch or what we in the industry call roll. If you can imagine your frame being a gutter, if the lens were too large, the skinniest part of the frame is down at the very bottom. So it caused the bottom of the frame to roll outwards, giving you an ugly cosmetic look 
as well as shortening the life of the frame. So I do what's known as the cold mount. I cut it down to size until it will just snap right into the frame. A lot of people will use heat to heat up the frame. Now I do that to take some glass lenses out of frames, but mostly I use the heat to do adjustments on frames to make sure that everything is in standard alignment. These places that do a thousand pair of lenses a day, these high volume labs, they use heat every time because they just cannot take the time like I'm doing to make sure that it's spaced right. Everybody has a boss and they're telling them, hurry up, get the job out, get the job out. A pair of glasses cutting a pair of lenses for one frame is known as a job. I'm doing one job now. If I were to have to do a thousand jobs in a day, I would have to use heat and drink a lot more at night. Ah. Maybe even drink a little bit in the morning before going in. Knowing how stressful that's going to be to get that many pair of glasses made and shipped in a day. Now I'm going to again tuck it in at the outside corner, push down the nose. Now it snaps in there easily. We're going to do the same thing for the left. Flip that over to L. Press that on there firmly. Put the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky Baby, the Chuckarama, or tonight I will call it the Amy. <laughs> Start. The door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to go around and again be traced by the two wide styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the left side of the frame and you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side and just like before measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thing they're showing of oop, a little bit of optical sawdust let me clean that up but that's all that is showing look at that Amy no edge thickness that's why I use the thinner lighter weight unbreakable polycarbonate lenses I have them custom made for you in this frame so let me go ahead and take this block off pull the sticker away use my hand approved drying method throw that back in there add that to my sticker collection and the black dot has worn off so I need to put some more on there Line that up again. Now, guys, you missed any of that. You should have been paying attention. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming. So, we're going to turn the fine tune knob to 85. That's convenient. I was just there. Your prescription reads minus 4, minus 75 at 85. Put it in just above that black dot. Turn the power drum until I get three skinny spherical lines at, oops, sorry about that. Did y'all hear that? At minus four in the red. You are myopic. You are nearsighted. So you need four diopters of farsighted correction. Everything is in quarter increments. So it starts at 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. So you're on the 16th rung of the ladder. So your lens is minify, that's why there's a minus sign. With your glasses off, you can see right here great, or right here. It just depends on, on what age you are. But you have incredibly good close vision, but beyond arm's range, I know from here on out, you have to put your glasses on to see clearly. So your lenses will minify down to the correct size. Now, once everything is the correct size, you still have three steps of astigmatism correction. Now, un I'm going to check for that now. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. So it's the fine tune knob. This number makes everything the correct size. This number takes away the fuzzy edges. Again, it's the fine tune knob. We're going to turn that fine tune knob to 85. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to stop just shy of that 90th meridian. And when I look in there, I see three thick lines. I get three skinny lines for the sphere power. And for the 90 degrees away, I get three thick lines spaced further apart. That's what I'm seeing when I look in the lensometer. I'm getting a minus 4 here when these come into view and minus 475 here. Why 475? Remember high school algebra we add two light signs together? Yeah, no one else does either. So if someone had borrowed four dollars from you and then they borrowed another 75 cents, they would owe you four dollars and 75 cents. That's where we're at. 475 in the red going towards 5, 4, 4 and a quarter, 450, 475. 
Now your left eye, you need the same amount of minification, but you only need one step of astigmatism correction. Now your bifocal strength is 225. It means the add. It means in addition to what's up top. So to find out your reading power, you add 225 to 4, and that would actually give you 175. So you naturally have one plus 175 sphere built into your lens for about right here. And again, you can take your glasses off. That's the wonderful thing about being nearsighted, is that you can see up close in a certain range. You have about a six to eight inch range, or the, the width of my PD stick, of where everything's in focus, and you have to play trombone with your hands to bring make everything focused. The reason why you wear the progressive is so you don't have to take your glasses on and off all day long to see something right here. Let's come back down to this, pull the lens out, dry everything off. Use my thumb to wash away any optical debris, schwarf, optical sawdust. Take the frame, tuck the lens in at the outside corners first. And Amy, if you ever get new lenses, you'll I'll show you how to pop the lenses out, but to put the new ones in, you have the side I'm working on closest to me. Elbows touching my sides, arms bent at a right angle. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner and then using your thumbs, press down at the nose. There we go. That was coming off. Pull that sticker away. Throw that back in there. Now to take the lenses out, you just pull up on the, t using your thumbs to push outward on the lens, pulling up on the frame and it pops right out to put them back in. Tuck it in at the outside corner and then push down with your thumbs at the nose. This is the thickest part of the frame. That's why I push down there. Some people like to tuck it in here first and then push down out here. Those people are crazy. I don't associate with those types of people. And I would appreciate if you guys wouldn't either. <laughs> so the dot is gone, but the other two outside dots that are how many millimeters apart? 34 millimeters. This is 17 millimeters to the center and then four millimeters above that. And if you guys don't believe that's 34 millimeters, let me put my PD stick on zero and we get right there. Look at that right before three and a half. See you guys, you got to trust me. You got to believe me with me, without me, with me, without me, with me, without me. So let's come down here to the lensometer. Turn that fine two knob to 120. Put it in over that black dot. And when I get three skinny lines like that, now they could be rotated in any direction, but they will always come in the three skinny lines first. And I'm getting minus four again. We're gonna check one quarter step of astigmatism correction. And when we do, we end up at minus four and a quarter. One tick mark away from four going towards five. Can you see? I don't know what you guys can see, but hopefully you can see three thick lines. And if I were to turn this just a little, you will see three skinny lines closer together. I can't tell what you guys are seeing. So, oh, you know what? I got a new GoPro. I will be able to in the future, but I got to get a new, a new phone first. My phone is too old to support the new GoPro app where I can watch on my camera what you guys are seeing. So... Your PD is 31 for each eye, which is a total of 65. No, wait, 62. Or do I hear 60? Going, going, 62 it is. So we're going to turn the card around. Look, my drawings. I drew those all by myself. Place the PD stick against my thumb on the right lens. When we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 62 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly to the center of the frame. Not the bottom of the lens, but to the center of the frame. We're going to get 18 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. 18 millimeters, that is cut perfectly. I tell you what, that guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes, he's pretty good. He's done this before. So this is the purchase, the purchase, the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention that this purchase is tax-free. And especially to anyone named Karen. <laughs> I'll always do free shipping for anyone named Karen. Because I accidentally called my wife uh, Karen over the weekend. That gets expensive when that happens. <laughs> I laugh about it because I'm innocent and I have nothing to fear. But it slipped out. Now, her real name is close to Karen. 
and if I hadn't been drinking and driving, I probably wouldn't have said it, but uh, yeah, I did. So it's out there. We know where we stand. Um, but, oh, so, hey, let me back up. This frame, the Ray-Ban 5187, sells for $158. The top of the line, Essilor Verilux X Freeform Digital Progressive Lens adds $299.99. The Transitions Brown adds $79.99. And Cruzal Sapphire is $139.99 for a total of $677.97. Now, most people would balk at that. And that is a fair amount to pay for a pair of glasses. Amy must have priced these at her doctor's office. And when I gave her, gave her a price, she jumped on it on them almost immediately. By the way, she contacted me over the weekend, fully expecting not to get a response until Monday. But uh, that's the great thing about smartphones is that uh, I can answer back because I, I was in the doghouse having to sit in the corner. So I could answer back rather quickly then. So until my wife takes my phone away from me when I'm in the doghouse, I won't be able to respond back to emails. But this purchase is tax-free because I am in North Carolina. My state does not charge tax on medical devices, and they consider eyeglasses to be a medical device. So anywhere else that she would have purchased these, let's just say it was $677.97 times 8% sales tax here in North Carolina, she would have paid another $54.23, but she ain't gonna because she's buying them from me. Plus, there's free shipping anywhere in the United States, and Tampa, Florida is still in the United States. It's not underwater yet. So, but I'm gonna get these in stand. But I mentioned that, uh, I mentioned a lot of things. I need to stay on point. Focus, focus. Um, but when you get these in the mail, Amy, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first. And I'm part of that 80% too, and I'll show you in just a moment. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment, also known as the three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame is three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Years ago, I was working in a, in a shop before I opened my own. A guy comes in, puts his glasses on the counter, and does this to him. I take mine off, put mine right, right next to him, and I do the same thing. And I tell him, if you know someone who can fix that, let me know. Because I was born this way. <laughs> so let me put mine back on. Flip that over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, that neither temple is askew like that. I also check the tension on each spring hinge, that is perfect. If one was looser or tighter than the other, I would adjust for that. I still got that new car squeakiness, I like that. Once you start to wear it, makeup, body oil, sweat, all that will get in there and loosen up. But this is what your lenses look like the first time. They have not been activated. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light to make the lenses turn brown, hopefully. At least maybe one lens is brown. The other one's gray. That'd be cool. No, okay, they both better be brown. But as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. I'm starting to take them out there. Now, this is important, Amy, and everyone else paying attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time the transition signature 7 lenses won't darken is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your, sun's, your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Now, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone, when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So this is the first time they've been activated. They, they will get darker. Amy, come on, we talked about that. Don't you remember? Karen, listen to me. Come on, Karen. <laughs> Amy, Amy, did I call you Karen? Uh, you know, all the cool kids are called Karen now, so. Oh, I'm in trouble. My wife's sitting over there. I bet she's fuming over there. Is she behind me? Is she behind me? No, no, I don't hear anything. Okay. So again, as I keep running my mouth and getting deeper and deeper in trouble, these will continue to lighten. 
but again this is the transitions brown you can also get them in gray and possibly even green i need to check with the verilux x but i know you should be able to get them in gray or brown you may even be able to get them in the transitions extra active as well as with the mirror colors you can also do that too so if you like what you've seen and you want to see me get in more trouble with my wife, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as FreePrescriptionLenses.com or on, on Twitter as FreeRxLenses. If you have any questions about what I can or can't do, and I actually can't remember if I had this color combination on the website, so that's why Amy emailed me. And I said, of course I can get that for you. But my email is FreePrescriptionLenses at gmail.com or simply click the Contact Me button on the website. So Amy, Karen, whatever your name is in Tampa, Florida, thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 5187, color 2445, which is the tortoise in the green. Of course, this one happens to be called Havana in green. Oh, by the way, I send out a selfie request in every package. I would love to have your picture on the website. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only for your frame and lenses, but for your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, the premium microfiber cloth that I provide as well as the Crozal cloth you're going to get and how to clear and clean for your case so it too will last you for years. So keep me in mind for a selfie request, Amy. And again, thank you for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 5187, size 52. This also comes in a 50 eye size. This is the larger size of 52, color 2445, with the Verilux X design with transitions brown and Crozal sapphire. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.